All right, good day, everyone. Uh, for today's lesson, we'll be discussing the importance of qualitative research across field. That is for our lesson seven. Um, actually, our topic is literally everywhere. So you don't have to worry if you're having a problem of choosing what topic or what title you want to put it in your research. I'm here to help you, okay? So for this lesson class, I know that some of you already have a topics, but just in case that you wanna know more and you wanna learn the fields, the, uh, the fields that we have available for today, then you can actually choose whatever you want, all right? So research studies take place in different fields of discipline like anthropology, business, communication, education, engineering, law, and nursing. So these areas of knowledge include huge number of research studies, which mirror varied interest of people. So people working under this field use one of the three basic research approaches in conducting their studies. We do have the positive or scientific, naturalistic and triangulation or mixed methods. So what are these things? What are these methods that we're, that we're talking about? Okay, so the three basic research approaches in conducting their studies, then we'll be explaining to that on the next slides. So when we say positive, it only means that it's the scientific approach. So we call it like a scientific approach. It focuses on measurable and observable facts rather than personal views, feelings, or attitudes. So anything that could probably observe observable and uh, then therefore we call it like a scientific approach. All right. So it's also done through collecting data in the form of questionnaire or structure interviews. These types of data recorded in numerical or statistical forms and are known as the quantitative data. All right. So quantitative data, because everything can be uh, seen and uh, observable, computable in the sense, because we know that the quantitative data is more in figures, facts, and numbers. So therefore, it's, yeah, this study can be found or uh, can, can this scientific approach can be applied on that, okay? So uh, can be also used in researches under the hard sciences or we call it the STEM, like in science, technology, engineering, and medicine and natural sciences like biology, physics, and uh, chemistry. So this is what we call like hard sciences. So if you try to explore your study within this kind of approach, then therefore you have to uh, understand what are the things that could probably, or what kind of studies uh, that may probably think of, all right? So more on science, then you can actually find what, uh, which field you interest the most. And we do have this kind of naturalistic approach, which means data collected, like reflect personal views, attitudes, thoughts, emotions, and other subjective traits of people in natural setting. It pays attention to the discovery of the real concept or meaning behind people's lifestyle and social relations. So that's what we call naturalistic approach. For the, uh, for the things for, uh, can I say, the characteristic of natural, naturalistic approaches that I just said, like it is what collected, uh, collected reflect personal views. Yeah, and emotions and other subjective traits. So it can be found on the naturalistic approach. Okay, another thing that you have to remember when you try to explore the naturalistic approach, then use verbal language like in presenting and analyzing things. So basically when we say verbal language and this is our uh, uh, content or can I say a approach for this, then we call it like a um, qualitative approach, all right? Qualitative approach or qualitative analysis where the descriptive text or some, can I say text uh, is the main uh, ingredient in order to interpret the data in this part. And then after that is after qualitative data and is done through the use of unstructured interviews and participants and observation. So we all know that we can get this portion or it can be one community, uh, can I say one organization, one community, individual, and so on, for you to be able to understand their behavior and characteristic, anything that can be observable. Well, observable is one of the, uh, observation is one of the techniques that you can use in, uh, and qualitative 
And uh, well, therefore, since we are talking about the observations, then uh, you can use that too. Aside from that, you can also use the, uh, uh, what I call this one, interviews. Interviews is one of the techniques also that you can use under the qualitative data, right? So next we have, can be used under the soft science like anthropology, business, education, economics, law, politics, and all subjects aligned with business and all those focus on helping professions, such as nursing, counseling, physical therapy, and the like. That's according to Bobby and 2013. So that is fall under naturalistic approach. So we want you to explore the study under the naturalistic approach, and you are using the qualitative design of your research, then definitely you can use this, right? So what is triangulation, or we call it like a mixed method? What does it mean? Well, this is a combination of the quantitative and a qualitative research. We all know that we can combine that too. And uh, somehow it's kind of be interesting. Like uh, it's, it's, it gives you a more accurate result just for me. All right. And I know that everyone designed for some instances or for some studies, but somehow and this is my just personal views that the tri triangulations is also one of the best, the best method we're allowing you to mixture of research design, like the collections and data analysis techniques used in the first two me methods. So this is a combination of the quantitative and a qualitative research. All right. So we do have the three main methods of data collection in this part. So first, we do have the interactive interviewing. So interactive interviewing, what does it mean? It only means that people share and describe their experiences through words. So basically it's verbal speaking. So it's a good thing that when you have this kind of interactive interviewing where you can actually get the first hand uh, information coming from your respondent and uh, inter interactive interviewing, you can actually doing uh, observing your respondent at the same time and then getting all the information that you need, you'll be having a chance to get to know more of your respondent. So definitely interactive interviewing is one of the methods of getting the data collection. So aside from that, uh, secondly, written descriptions by participants. You know, interactive interviewing, we also have that interview when we say in a qualitative research, uh, as one of their techniques for you to get the data and uh, one of the ways for you to interpret as well after you gather the data. Then this one also, we call it have an interactive interviewing, meaning there is a combination of a qualitative and quantitative data. So do not be confused, right? So secondly, we do have this written descriptions by participant, meaning people are asked to write descriptions of their experiences of certain phenomena. Then definitely it, talks about their narr narrative, you know, their experiences, point of views, perceptions, and so on. So we call it like a written descriptions. It's somehow related to a narrative analysis, okay? So three, we do have this observation, just like what I said. Descriptive observations of verbal and nonverbal behaviors could also be observed in this part. So that's how you get, uh, or that's how that's what the method they use when you try to go on the mixed method, or we call it triangulation. Okay. So for this one class, we will be discussing uh, studying these tables, right? Okay. So what what does this table is trying to say here? The table below shows the differences between quantitative research and the qualitative research and the areas of knowledge under them. So if you try to look at on your screen, it was divided into two. And yeah, if you look at on the left and the right side of your hand, you will see there in the, in the, in the uh, left side of your hand, you will see there is the quantitative research. On the other hand, we do have the qualitative research. And let's just com com compare the differences between hard sciences and soft sciences, because usually most of the students are confused of, what do you mean when you say hard science? What about the soft science? What are the types of sciences or fields under the soft science or hard sciences? So this is a great opportunity for you to learn about it, okay? So when we say hard sciences class, it's just the studies of a natural data-driven phenomenon. Well, the soft sciences is the studies human behavior in a scientific manner. 
what does it mean? What's the difference? If you try to look at on the differences, when we say hard science, it's like the natural data driven, everything that could be observable physically. Okay. Well, the soft sciences is like it studies the human behavior that cannot be seen by our own eyes, but could also be observable based on these people reacting, uh, interpreting, uh, not only interpreting, but how this uh, responded behaving or uh, responding towards the given questions or towards the given situation. It depends on the techniques that you will be using in order to gather and to collect the data that you will be using in the near future, all right? So when we say quantitative research and qualitative research, the quantitative research class is more an objective, while the qualitative research class is more on subjective. That's the difference between the two. We also discussed that previously in our lesson, right? And uh, since this is an objective, we more on testing a theory and our uh, qualitative research class in develops a theory, okay? Since uh, qualitative research class is somehow an exploratory research, meaning it's a great, great opportunity for you to understand individuality or uh, their characteristic and behavior. So you will have a given a chance to understand those, uh, the one that I just said, or uh, the one that I just mentioned. While this one is more on majority, like uh, the, the the uh, what, what, what do you call this one the number okay uh, when you gather a data and then the number speaks a lot meaning that the, the figures okay if you interpret in a qualitative research through words and you know you were looking for the common denominator of your respondents based on the words that describe like a descriptions to a certain questions that you just gave to them here in the uh, quantitative data, you have to compute or to gather a data. It, it's undergone with the process, or it needs to undergo uh, with a certain process associated with quantitative research approach. And then after that, you will be getting the total uh, number, okay? So when you get the numbers or the findings of your uh, study, then that's the time you will be interpreting what that figure means what that number stands for, okay? So what do you mean by that? So that's the time that you will be explaining on that number, okay? And um, of course, when we say quantitative research, we are talking about the cause and effect relationship. Sometimes you will be looking the uh, relationship of each variable associated with your studies, like a correlation. So you wanna know uh, about their uh, relationship between uh, variables that you put in on your studies, all right? And then a cause and effect. Um, a statistical analysis and generalizations class, for example. So here's our, here are the more, here are, here are the possible field where most of the quantitative research can find or can, uh, you can do qualitative research in this field. So biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy, and art science. Uh, I'm sorry, earth science. Okay. And examples for a qualitative research class, we do have the sociology, psychology, political science, economics, anthropology, history. So those are the field of the studies that you will be getting to know if you want to explore more and understand more. It depends on what kind of approach that you'll be using. If you are grade 11, listening to me right now, then basically what you need to do is the qualitative research. So you have to focus all those subject areas that I just said. But if you are in grade 12 and you want to continue or exploring to your study, why not to consider the hard sciences? Because that makes your life easier to choose. Okay. So uh, next, in uh, humanities, my social life is also subjected to research studies, but instead of focusing on one social life itself, it highlights the study of meanings, their significance, and visualization of human experiences in the fields of fine arts, literature, music, drama, dance, and other art related subject. All right. So we do have this humanistic categories. So don't be don't forget what uh humanistic categories. We do have the literature and art criticism, 
which, uh, which means with the use of well-chosen language and appropriate organizational pattern depends greatly on their interpret, uh, interpretative and reflective thinking in evaluating the object of your study critically. So, well, do not be confused or not be confused yourself when we say literature and art of criticism. It only saying there that use of well-chosen language and of course, appropriate organizational pattern is one of the clue in there in order to understand this concept. No? Um, well, this is because we wanted to understand the thinking of the people and evaluating their objective no? uh, in that particular field. So we do have the philosophical research. When we say philosophical research is the focus on inquiry is on knowledge and principles of being and on the manner human beings conduct themselves on earth. <laughs> so philosophical research class is somehow a little bit, uh, for me, it's a kind of interesting as well because it's more um, answering a curiosity, right? Uh, understanding of a certain principles and uh, human being behaviors and everything's around us, <laughs> philosophical research. And uh, we do have the historical research also focuses on events and ideas that took place of much life in a particular period. So basically self-explanatory when we say historical research. All right. So for the next lesson class, we'll be talking more about this. I hope you learned something. And then after this video lesson, we will have the in-depth discussion of all the subject areas that I just said. So if you have any questions, feel free to. Um, feel free to ask, and of course, we'll be responding to you if there's still an ample time. All right. So thank you, and uh, God bless yourself. Bye bye for now.